So there's a little exercise I did the other day that has changed the way I plan my set list for my weekend gathering services and I really wanna share it with you because it's it's been really beneficial. If you don't know, I have like a certain criteria before any songs get put into my library of songs. I keep a Google spreadsheet of all the songs that we are doing in this season. Sometimes songs get booted off as we don't wanna do them anymore and that's where I have new songs come on there. I decide which hymns we're gonna focus on for this particular season, and I update this about twice a year. I usually have like a open door worship catalog spring 24, that's one we're in right now, and then when we get a little bit later into the summer, I'll go ahead and plan the fall catalog. So that's how I do it. It's just easy for me to see potential new songs. That's the first category. Then I have like modern worship songs I pull from, and then I have hymns that I pull from. But the other day I was challenged and somebody asked me, they're like, hey, how many of your songs in the current lineup um, are plural or singular, meaning how many say I and me versus how many say we and us. And I got to thinking, huh, I don't know that number. Now there's a book that I read a few years ago that has been super helpful when thinking about worship ministry in general. And it's called The Worship Pastor by Zach Hicks. I don't have it here in my building, but I'll try to link it down below. Definitely grab that book, The Worship Pastor by Zach Hicks. And in that, in that book, there's a chapter called The Theological Dietary and he shares his criteria for selecting songs before they ever get sung on a Sunday. And I have definitely absorbed that information and put it into practice. I've even added a few more of the criteria. And these are criteria I use all the time to help get songs from an idea, should we sing this to Sunday morning? Well, one of the first things on Zach Hicks's list says, is it aimed Godward. Is the song aimed Godward? And I love how it's worded this way. It's worded specifically this way because it doesn't rule out all songs that say I or me, or doesn't just promote the songs that say we and us. Is it aimed Godward means I can sing a song that says I and me as long as I and me is not the focus of the song. Like, can the song still be aimed Godward and I still say the words I and me? Yes, I think it can. But when we are gathered, on Sunday morning when we are gathered with the body, that is a different special time that is different from worshiping throughout the week alone in our car or with our family. And one of the things that's important to do is to do things and to say things and sing things in our services that remind each other that our faith is corporate. This is a corporate time. Yes, our faith is personal, meaning I can't get to heaven on the coattails of anyone else, but it's corporate in nature. It's a, we are a body of believers. It's never private, but it is personal and it's corporate. So we need to do things as we're planning our services to support that, to train people because we are so uh, individualistic, especially in our culture these days, we are hyper individualistic. And so our gathering on Sunday should be counter-cultural so much so that when we come in and we are taking a part in the structure or liturgy of our services, we realize something is different. And one great way to do that is to sing songs that say we and us, but sometimes it's hard to find good songs that do that, that have good theology, that are fun to sing, and there's a bunch of other criteria I look into before adding songs into the library. So all that to say, I was really uh, intrigued when I was asked that question, what percentage is we and I, uh, we and we and us and I and me, and I was like, I have no idea. So I did this little practice. I went down and created like a little legend, pink, I, I made every song in pink is written in singular. Every song in blue with the color blue is plural. And I made orange a third category because some songs don't have any reference to ourselves. And then some songs do both where it'll start off with I and me and end up we and us. So let me take you over to the computer and I will just show you our set list. I'll show you uh, the catalog that I pull from. Now, some things you might need to know is that at my church, we made a, a decision a few years ago not to sing any Bethel or Hill song. And so it's been a journey of finding new songs and new artists that we can sing that aren't Bethel and Hill song. Now, this video is not a discussion of whether you should do that or not. It was a pastoral decision on our behalf. And I have spoken about that many times on this channel. You can go look that up. But before I show you the uh, worship catalog and how it's laid out. I wanna give you something for free. It's called my six day guide to better engagement. You wanna get people to sing when they show up. You hate getting up there and saying, hey, let's lift up a shout of praise. And everybody's just, 
kind of staring at you. you. We want people to be engaged, not just because we we wanted to feed our, our personal ego, like, yeah, I'm glad something I did made somebody be engaged, but we want people engaged in worship because it's our creator. He's worthy. He's worth it all. And there are things that we can do to promote engagement and singing, and there are things that we can do that kind of squelch it. And so I'm going to give you this free guide, download it, read it, implement it, and people will be engaged. It's the plan I use at my church. Okay. All right, here it is. Here is my Open Door Worship Catalog Spring 2024. So uh, right here, like I said, I have potential new songs, and this really was eye-opening. Out of the nine new songs that I want to introduce or that we're going to be doing soon, eight of them were singular. Remember down here, singular. Pink is singular, blue is we and us. So God Really Loves Us by Crowder is the only one uh, that I was planning on introducing probably this year that had we and us language in it. And so now I might be rethinking that because I want some of these songs, I want it to be a balanced diet. I'm not saying you can't do any singular songs, but it should be balanced. Here are some of the songs we've introduced recently. I wrote one for Easter called Our Savior's Alive. I made it the way I wanted it. I wanted to say we and us, so it does. You can see these here are pink. Uh, Jesus is better. That's the Austin Stone. It does we both, I think. Um, Sing O Nations, another open door song. Our God is Alive by Austin Stone. That's a good one. This is our God, Phil Wickham. God so loved, we the kingdom, I think it is. Love of the Father, it's a city of light, I think. Behold Him, Paul Beloche. Holy is our God, another Austin Stone song. Anyways, you can kind of see through here some of the songs that we do. But one other thing that was eye-opening is the amount of hymns that were pink. So for those that say you should do more hymns because they are more theologically correct, I agree, you should do hymns because they are theologically correct. A lot of them are. Be smart which ones you're picking. But as we can see on this list, there are way more pink and orange hymns than there are blue ones. So anyways, I thought this was a, a bene beneficial practice for me and I challenge you to do it as well. And let me know the results in the comments. I actually did the percentages. I forgot to look that up. But what it's done since I did this, when I go to plan my set list, now I can quickly see like, hey, I don't want every song to be a pink song and it doesn't, they don't all have to be blue songs either, but it helps me balance the diet that I'm feeding the church, which is a big thing for me. I wanna make sure that our church is getting a balanced diet of what types of songs we are singing. And there's a lot of things that go into it. Some songs are just hard to play and I might have to look at the volunteers that weekend and, and ask the question, can they play it? There are a lot of other questions I ask, like does the mood match the lyrics? Are we singing something happy, but singing it in a minor key? That's a, that's a big one for me. Another one is, is it theologically precise? throughout is there any heresy in there you know there are some songs that are like all of it is great except for one word and and you're like oh well that kind of changes everything I don't I don't want to sing that well you don't have to sing that one thing my pastors taught me is that you don't have to sing a song just because it's popular there's a bunch of other good music out there anyways thank you for watching go grab your free guide and I'll see you in the next video bye